Shalom. This week we are reading Parshat Va'era. God spoke to Moshe and said to him, I am Hashem. I appeared to Avraham, to Yitzchak, and to Yaakov as El Shaddai, but with my name Hashem, I did not make myself known to them. Moreover, I established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their sojourning in which they sojourned. Everything, Hashem tells Moshe, is about to change. Even your perception of my identity until now. You understood things that go according to a certain order, that makes sense in a certain way in this world, but from this point on, everything is going to change because I am Hashem. Indeed, this week's Parshat Va'era, we encounter the majority of the plagues that were visited upon Pharaoh in Egypt. So, the redemption is about to begin. Moshe spoke to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moshe this time because of shortness of breath and hard work. And Hashem said to Moshe, saying in verse 11, essentially, enough is enough here. Come, speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he send the children of Israel from his land. And again, Moshe demurred. He spoke before Hashem, saying, behold, the children of Israel have not listened to me, so how will Pharaoh listen to me and I have sealed lips? And from this point on, Aaron is going to accompany Moshe. He is going to be the spokesman, Moshe's brother, Aaron, to take the children of Israel out of the land of, of Egypt. And all of a sudden, in Parshat Va'era, in chapter 6, in verse 14, our story is interrupted. And we have a long genealogical record of the heads of their father's houses. We're talking about Moshe and Aaron, and now we're going all the way back, including the cousins, the second cousins, the uncles, the great uncles of Moshe and Aaron, the sons of Reuven, the firstborn of Israel, Hanoch and Palu, Chetzron and Carmi. These were the families of Reuven. And we go all through the tribes, of course, the sons of Gershon, Livni and Chimi, the sons of Kahat. We get to the genealogy of Moshe himself, all the way through, and then, at the end of this insertion of a genealogical record that seems to be a total diversion from the drama of our story, we encounter an even more perplexing verse. Verse 27, They were the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to take the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, this was Moshe and Aaron. So, in verse 26 we find, This was the Aaron and Moshe to whom Hashem said, Take the children of Israel out of Egypt according to their legions. Verse 27, They were the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to take the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. This was the Moshe and Aaron. And then the story continues. It was on the day when Hashem spoke to Moshe in the land of Egypt. Hashem spoke to Moshe saying, I am Hashem, speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, everything that I speak to you. And again, Moshe said before Hashem, Behold, I have sealed lips, so how shall Pharaoh heed me? And everything is about to change for all time in ways that will alter the perception that all humanity has of the world of nature, of godliness, of justice, of right and wrong. How perplexing that in the middle of this story we have kind of like a, a detour of this genealogy. Well, who was Moshe and Aaron that the verse has to tell us? They were the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to take the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. This was the Moshe and Aaron. Is this the first time that we're meeting up with them? Of course not. But you know, we have to understand something. Up until now, the efforts of Moshe had been somewhat frustrated. But everything is about to change. Now Moshe is going to meet with tremendous success, and his mission is going to be responsible for the exodus of Israel from Egypt. You know, he's dealing with Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a man who made himself out to be a god. He convinced his entire people that he was a god. Indeed, from the most ancient times, there were men who were very striking and very charismatic and had the ability to have a tremendous influence over their people, and their deeds were reckoned as almost godlike. Pharaoh was such a person. His passing 
was was a, just a uh, a phase in the life of a god, as far as the Egyptians were concerned. And indeed, later on in history, there was another person, a Jew, whose genealogical records were not necessarily uh, totally available. Perhaps they were askew. And eventually, he was also ascribed to a godlike status. And so, eventually, doubting his divinity became a, a crime punishable with death for many people. But Moshe, Moshe that is about to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt was a man. He came from a good stock. He came from Levi. Levi came from that mother of Israel, Leah. Moshe was a man who was imbued with humility. He was a wonderful vessel for the presence of God, but he was born a man, he remained a man, and he always was to remain a man. And even later, when he delivered Israel from Egypt, and he brought Israel to the foot of Mount Sinai, and his face shone with the radiance of the presence of God, and he brought the Torah down from heaven, he was always a man, and the Torah takes pains at this point, before Moshe is about to be met with the greatest success a human being could possibly be met with, in the face of forces of evil and manipulation and exploitation that themselves claimed powers of God, we are reminded what it really means to be a Jew in this world, and what it really means to be a leader, what it really means to be godly. It means to be a human being who comes from other ordinary human beings, whose genealogy can be traced, not to God himself, but to a mother in Israel. And this is the secret of the deliverer and the savior of Israel, and he who brought about the greatest spiritual revolution of all time, who brought Israel out of Egypt and who delivered the Torah to Israel, he was a man. And so the Torah testifies here that it's possible for a human being to rise to the greatest potential of closeness to God. Moshe, about whom the Torah will testify, he was the humblest of all men upon the face of the earth. Moshe, about whom the Torah will testify, that he was totally familiar in God's house, that he spoke to God like a man who speaks to his friend face to face. So can any human being achieve this level? Maybe we can take what the Torah is telling us and take it to the other extreme and say, oh, any person can become the greatest prophet in the world. Any human being can rise to the highest level. If that's what it is, if it's, if, if it's just about being a regular man, so then any person that we see in the street who might ne not necessarily be a person who even strives for greatness or who attempts to refine himself, that person might be blessed with a divine countenance. No, this is also not true, because Moshe comes from Levi, he comes from Leah. He was a person who learned from his forebears, from his own father, who learned from the lineal descent. He was able to look back and see examples of proper behavior, examples of what it means to walk with God. He was chosen by God specifically because, as we see over and over again, he didn't want the job. He demurred. He thought nothing of himself. He thought everything of his people. He was filled with total humility and total readiness to lay down his life for the next one, as we've already seen twice in the, in the brief history that we have already known Moshe since he emerged here in the book of Exodus. Genealogy comes to teach us, yes, he was a man, he remained a man, he will always be a man. But look what a man can become, not God, he was not divine any more than any other human being, but a man who strives for closeness to God and who sets his own needs aside and who looks only to help others and who allows himself to be filled with the presence of God and who has the most important characteristic of all, which is humility, that person can become closer to God than anyone else. That person can even be the deliverer. And that person, above all, who can come to even embody the entire Torah is 
after all, a human being. And this indeed is the greatness, the beauty, the potential of what it really means to be a human being.